I'm a very brilliant fun fact about me. I've been drinking coffee since I was five years old. Uh, my parents took me to Jamaica. That was actually my first cup of coffee. Uh, and my first alcoholic drink, that was by accident. Um, so if you ever want to know how to say my name, it's Nava, so Java but with an N. Uh, so there's, there's my fun fact. Now, how many of you like PPC? Exactly. I was, I was sitting here listening to all these amazing sessions, technical SEO, content. Um, PPC, we're the scary monsters in the room. We're the ones that are like taking away all of the, that amazing effort that you could be putting in. Now, how many of you like The Witcher? Yeah, all right, see, so half the reason that I'm here presenting this to you is because I've been looking for an excuse to talk about digital marketing with The Witcher. It is my absolute favorite game. And one of the reasons why Geralt of Rivia is such an inspiring guy, is such an inspiring hero, is yes, sometimes he has to attack the monster in the room, but more often than not, he talks to it. It's a puzzle solving. So today, we are going to explore how we can turn your digital marketing quest into instead of just hitting it over the head with a sword, you're actually going to solve the problem. You're gonna lift that profit, not by drowning yourself in analysis, but by actually taking action. So a little bit about me. Um, as uh, Deepak mentioned, I've been in digital marketing since 2008. I actually did a little stint in SEO, uh, made the switch to PPC uh, in 2012. Uh, I work at WordStream, I work across our international customer base, talking to advertisers, agencies, uh, and you'll notice that little puppy over there, HK47, uh, I'm also a big Star Wars nerd, uh, so he's named for the assassin droid. Uh, and so if you want PPC tips, like if I whet your appetite about paid search, you want to learn more, uh, follow PPC Puppy on Instagram and you'll hear instead of from me, from that really adorable puppy over there. So there you go. So quality score, um, since how many of you actually know what quality score is? Cool. So for those of you that don't know, quality score is a score that is assigned by Google and Bing to your keywords, to your ads, and inevitably it, it falls into the account. So those of us in the paid search space panic over this, or at least some of us do. Now, how many of you heard about the goldfish study um, talking about the attention spans and how human attention spans are actually shorter than a goldfish's? All right, so I just told you about the study. And it was actually disproved. And if you look for the goldfish study on the same search result page where the knowledge graph will tell you about it, you'll actually see the post talking about how we're actually task dependent. So we are actually capable of great focus but only if we care about what we're doing. So all of you here are proving this point perfectly. You have been sitting here taking in all of this amazing knowledge and you've been focusing, you've been absorbing, you've been taking down notes. So we have attention span if we actually care. So Aquizio and many other folks, uh, Wordstream included, did a bunch of case studies back in like 2000, I think this one was a 2007 or 2009. There's some that were in 2012 that, talked, that told you you had to have a minimum of seven. Some even pushed you higher. And in the US, um, and there's a little bit of variance internationally, but in the US, the average quality score is a 5.6. And that makes sense. Google will start you off with a 6. 5.6 is average. Now, no one wants to be average. Who here wants to be average? Exactly, we don't. We want to be exceptional. We want to be warriors of profit. We want to slay monsters. We also want discounts on clicks. Um, quality score uh, is actually a means by which you can get cheaper cost per clicks with your auction. So for those of you that don't know, in PPC, you bid on keywords. That gives you access to paid placements on when you do a Google search. And having a good quality score can help you get cheaper clicks. Um, and we also want good impression share. Uh, so in paid search, there's a metric called impression share, which is the sum of all available impressions you are currently getting against how many you are eligible for. So we want to have that amazing impression share. We want to have the biggest potential for profit. Um, so it may surprise you, because paid search is, is not your forte, but most paid search folks are not going to be surprised by this graph, that it's, it's a linear up and to the right uh, by click-through rate. Um, and same thing uh, on average CPC, that quality score of 10 is the lowest, quality score of one is, is, is annoying. But I, I, did, I was curious, what would happen if we removed branded campaigns? Uh, so how many of you know what I mean by a branded campaign? Awesome. 
so for those of you that don't, branded campaigns very simply are separating and segmenting your branded campaigns into a separate campaign so that your budget isn't diverted into branded terms when you want it to be for new discovery. So what happened when we, did, uh, we took the branded campaigns out, we filtered those, we actually started to see far more variables in where the best click-through rate was and where the best cost per click was. And so it wasn't a guarantee that we would have the metrics we were looking for with that perfect quality score. In fact, um, quality score of six beat out the seven. Uh, we also saw that quality score of nine beat out the 10 with a, uh, with a better click-through rate, but a flat cost per click. Um, and the quality score of one actually had cheaper cost per clicks than two through seven. This mic is totally not sitting correctly, but that's okay, we'll work with it. Uh, and you'll, you'll all get these slides. Uh, so impression share with and without branded followed a very similar trend. It wasn't a guarantee that we would have that perfect uh, capture of the market simply by having a perfect uh, quality score. Um, and conversions, that big spike, is the branded campaign. So branded campaigns are predisposed to a better quality score. But let's actually dig into why. So, oh, well, actually, first quality score of uh, two and three beat out the five on impression share. Um, the gap really did close on the eight to 10 conversions when we removed branded. Um, and quality score of six beat out seven on conversion. So again, not a guarantee that you are going to have better metrics with a better quality score. So this is actually where the SEOs in the room get to have fun with the PPC folks. Uh, so what is the most optimized page of any website? Exactly, thank you. Um, so the home page is going to have the best quality score. The branded campaign is going to lead to the home page. So you're going to have the best quality score, you're gonna have the best conversions. Now, perfect keyword to add to landing page relevancy is actually one of the core components of quality score. So if we're looking at branded, you bid on your branded term, your brand is in the ad, your brand is going to be on your landing page, perfect keyword to add to landing page relevancy, and then that higher click theory rate and any other positive metric is going to be expected with a branded campaign. So let's take a step back and acknowledge that different campaigns, different initiatives are predisposed to different metrics. If you're in a really niche industry, if you're running a competitor campaign, if you're running, uh, Jason and I were talking about the other day about dynamic search ads or DSAs, like there's going to be different metrics. And just because we have a great quality score does not mean our ROI, our return on investment is the same. So let's look at this um, example client. Um, I'm gonna move over here and I'm totally gonna cheat and look at my slides. Uh, so in this particular instance, we have three markets. So it's the same service, but three different um, local markets. We have San Francisco, Denver, and East Bay. Equal quality score, average of 7.1. Yet, if we look at Denver, that cost per acquisition is half of East Bay. Same quality score. If we look at the, um, conversion rate of the 7.43 versus 3.28, it's ridiculous. So even though the conversions are the same on Denver versus East Bay, I am 100% more comfortable putting more money in Denver than East Bay. And again, San Francisco is doing well, like I'm not upset with the performance, but I definitely am not comfortable leaving that $50 a day on East Bay if Denver is doing better. So I'm gonna say something that I want you to put into your heart if you take nothing else away from this conversation, quality score is a health indicator, not a KPI. It is the most important thing, if you remember nothing else from this talk other than Witcher and Puppies and Star Wars, quality score is a health indicator, not a KPI. So how do we begin treating quality score as that health indicator? How do we help it to, or how do we allow it to help us to focus? So first, let's acknowledge what the different metrics are. So as I mentioned, Ad relevance, so what is the copy of the ad to the keyword? Um, what is the landing page experience? And what is that historical click-through rate? So if we solved for all of these components, we would build out the perfect character. We would have that amazing Geralt who's gone through New Plus games five times, and he has literally all of the equipment. It's great. So number one, click-through rate. How many of you get really frustrated when ads are in the top of your phones. 
Like I do, it's, it's really annoying, and I, I'm the one that markets them. So what's really fascinating, sorry, what? My yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so what's really fascinating is that in this mobile first world, you actually have to go, if you're going to look for mobile, for that position one to two. Desktop and tablet, it's perfectly fine to be in position two to three. You don't need to be an ego hound. But for mobile, you actually have to be in that first position because it's the only spot, whether it's paid or organic, that's guaranteed to be above the fold. So when that click-through rate drops, we're going to see that issue with the cost per click. Like, if, if, Decide if mobile makes sense to actually invest. Also, how many of you work in we'll call them high niche industries, or the cost of service is really expensive. So for those of you that do, your volume may be less, so you will be predisposed to a lower quality score on your paid efforts than, than otherwise. So you may have to decide that organic is where you put the majority of your new customer focus, and paid is where you rekindle the customer, where you nurture them. So rather than having to hunt for a whole bunch of new folks, you instead go after um, expanding existing customers. Um, and I'm gonna throw this out there. How many of you hate advertising, like, or hate ads? All right, I will say that I hate some ads. I get very aggravated at boring, bad ads. And those kill click theory, like look at these ads. Cambridge Dentist, Cambridge Identical. Who, what problem is that solving? Back Bay, Boston Dentist, um, Gentle Dental, Cambridge Quality Affordable Care, um, I do want to point out, for those of you in the room, um, Google has started taking up the local spot. Um, so if, for those of you that have claimed your Google My Business, and you sync that to your Google Ads account, you actually can, so long as you're, you're bidding on ads, get that spot for free. And you don't have to like, do an extra step. So the reason why this aggravates me is there's this new ad format, expanded text ads. You now can have up to three headlines. Look at what this poor dentist did. Award-winning service, call today, now booking new patients. That beautiful description that would have given that point of differentiation, it would have told me that they're accepting new patients because there's nothing more annoying than calling someone up and then they won't take you. That's in the description where no one will read it versus Cambridge Dentist, Cambridge Eye Dental. So let's, if, for those of you that are, are going to advertise or, or that do, do ads, take the time to look at your descriptions, see if there's copy you want to now put into your headlines. And it's also really important to acknowledge that bad account structure kills everything. Quality score included, but more importantly, it kills click theory, it kills impression share, it kills time, because certain account structures are predisposed to be time sucks. So I want to show you how Google will treat your account. This is a, a campaign with 25 active ad groups. One ad group is responsible for 60% of the impressions, and it has nothing to do with the quality of the keywords in that ad group. It has everything to do with the fact that that ad group won, there was a proven entity, and Google was really excited to put more and more budget behind something that was proven rather than waste your, your time and money on something that hadn't yet proven itself. So be mindful that you want to make sure that there are no more than five to seven ad groups per campaign and then if you need to go more, odds are it's a new campaign. Cost per click is going to be different. Also, let's take a look at what happens when broad match enters into the patient. So how many of you know what broad match is? OK, so broad match, uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, allows for Google to match the keyword that you bid on to a synonym of the term. So for example, best price dog groomer San Francisco matched to my poor client's ad for aggressive dog training. I don't care how much my client is wonderful in a sweetie pie and could probably groom a dog. Those are not the services that they are looking to sell. So that query, best price dog groomer San Francisco, has no possibility of profit. So we want to be very careful about how much broad match we're using and how much that's pulling us into auctions that don't quite make sense for us. Now, another thing to be wary of, so on the paid side, we have something called the Search Terms Report. Uh, it's our equivalent of the Search Console. So dog rehabilitation, that term can apply to rehabilitating a dog's behavior. But that also applies to a veterinary query. So that uh, cruciate ligament surgery dog rehabilitation 
cost 162% more than the average cost per click, yet would never have the potential to prove profitable. So it's really, really important to be mindful that even if a term is not on broad, is it broad enough? Is the intent of the keyword broad enough that it could pull you into an auction that will never be profitable enough for you? Um, so for those of you that don't know Witcher, um, I need to explain this, this analogy. Um, so Geralt in, in the games is torn between Triss and Yennefer. We all, for those of us that have read the books, we know that he goes with Yennefer, but in, in the games, it, it could be either or. So it's really important to acknowledge that there may be keywords that need to get paused. There may be initiatives that need to get paused. But we also need to take a step back and assess, are we putting them in a position that they are predisposed to lose? So for example, if you have 80 keywords in your ad group, only one or two of them are going to win. You might have your best possible performers in there, but they get no access to budget. You have no idea that they could have performed. So it's also really important to be mindful of what the landing page does to this equation. So when we make a promise in an ad, um, and we are making promises in an ad. So on the organic side, we earn those spots. On the paid side, we're willing to invest because we are owning the journey of where the user lands, and we are making a very specific statement with it. So if we're sending people to the ability to start dating, and then we're sent to a directory, we are not happy. Like, we were ready to start looking at people, start swiping left or right, and we get this nonsense. It's not good. And we also don't want to put people to sleep with a slow loading site. So there were some great sessions today talking about how to make it faster, don't put people to sleep. We also don't want to make people hunt for a wall or through a wall of text when it comes to a, a mobile experience in particular, but even on desktop. And it's really important to acknowledge that on the paid side, those people are ready to buy. They're ready to engage. They're ready to, to um, transact. We don't want to make them read. We, they've already done that. We're paying for the, the ability to get them to engage with us. And we also don't want to have a terrible mobile experience, period. So how many of you have gone to a, a, a site on your phone, you tried to call, and it wouldn't click? Like, it wouldn't call on the phone. Yeah, so that's this, this, this site. Like, look how big and beautiful that number is, and it's not, it's not, it's not linked to the phone. Like, they can't call from it. So what a waste. They paid a premium to send someone to this otherwise perfectly fine site, and they probably lost the call. So how do we begin chasing quality instead? What are the main metrics we can use? And um, I'm happy to, in, in the Q&A, kind of work through how we can make it a little bit more aligned to SEO. But um, on the paid side, what, is, what does it look like? So a campaign is going to underperform if it's trying to do too many things. Um, it's, it's really important to think about the locations, the schedule, the strategic initiatives that you're looking to do. But it's also really important to think about how much time are you giving it to succeed. Ah, there we go. So on impression share. Um, and this was done across WordStream data. Um, so it's at this point, we have 1,000 accounts uh, that are active. And then we have, uh, I think it's 75,000 uh, that run through our grader, so that, that's where this data set comes from. Uh, so on US impression share, the average impression share is 47%. So average is getting less than half of all available impressions. But it's not lost a budget. It's not like you, we can't afford the, these views. It's rank. It's structural things that we could solve for. So uh, we have a tool called the query stream that, that will kind of pull these things for you. Um, but the search terms report, you can, you can do a very similar thing where you just pull in the column of the match by keyword. See what term is leading to the best idea. So in this particular instance, professional dog training matched to in-home dog training off of broad. It was 3% cheaper, and every click led to a conversion. So of course, we would want to transition from in-home dog training to that professional dog trainer. Also, what parts of, the budget, or what parts of our campaign and our businesses don't deserve access to budget. Um, I'm sorry, Tris, you're a liar. I think my mic just went, but I don't care. We're going to keep going. Um, also, match types. Um, modified broad, um, which is the most common match type now that like broad match and things have, have gone away, 
Um, do you need me to stop while the mic is off or tell me? All right, we'll, we'll, we'll keep going. This, ah, thank you. Enjoy. All right, are we good? We're good, okay. So um, you'll notice that logo design is, a, is the main kind of common denominator term, and we have it here. It got the majority of the impressions, whereas logo design online tool, which was actually what the client wanted, Got my relation out on the majority of the impressions, it only got 2,961 and 17 conversions at a cost requisition of 45.73. It could have done better if that really stupid logo designs two word keyword wasn't there. So be mindful of the match types, be mindful of the long tail or short tail nature of the terms that you're bidding on and how it can cause those structural issues. Now, the other piece to think about is ad copy. So these two ads lived in the branded campaign. You're going to get this deck. Actually, how much time do I have? Nine. Nine? Cool. All right, we're good. So this particular ad had a, um, 129 conversions versus uh, the 33 on this side. No brainer to actually greet the prospect. So that ad did well because uh, we're haggle-free, we're haggle we address the, the, the issue of the, um, or we, we address the, the problem the person might be facing. Just be, be mindful of, of what the prospect is searching for. Um, now, how many of you have heard about in-market audiences? Cool. So Google, in its infinite wisdom, decided that it was going to play Facebook's game. And it actually does it quite well. So you, all of you right now, if you wanted to play with paid search, excuse me one second, <coughs> sorry about that. Um, if you wanted to play with paid search, you could actually target people who are in market for SEO and SCM services and bid on them exclusively if you wanted. So in market uh, audiences are actually a tool that dynamically updates and puts people into buckets that you can bid up, bid down, exclude based off of what they are looking for. So someone looking for a car has a very different sales cycle than someone looking for a pair of shoes. And Google and, and Bing, to be fair as well, will account for that. Oh, God darn it. There we go. All right, so we're gonna finish off with a case study and some action items, and then I'm happy to take your questions. So uh, Coro K9, the client that I was talking about before, they are a dog trainer that work with like the worst of the worst dogs. Not that the dogs are bad, but they have like the worst experiences. And they offer both uh, board and train and uh, in-home training classes. So show, show of hands, how many people think that Koro Canine was happier with me when the CPA was 2513 versus in May when it was 4502? So how many of you think they were happier with me in February? Okay. Y'all are so smart, you know it's a trick question. Uh, so to put things in perspective, uh, Coro Canine, if we look at February, spent uh, a, in total about $6,600 US in the month across all of the different channels that they advertise on. And the, what they were able to achieve with that were um, 79 in-home engagements for a grand total of about 200,000 uh, gross revenue um, and 13 board and trains for, we'll round up and say $252,000 in revenue. It's a little bit less, but we'll, we'll round up. So they were really excited. They achieved a 30 point ROI. Like that, that's, or we're trying to add spend. Like that's, that's amazing. So they wanted to fuel the beast. They wanted to put more, uh, put more energy into it. And so ironically enough in May, um, we spent about a thousand dollars less but we achieved something interesting. We shifted our focus from in-home to board and train. We actually put uh, display campaigns, video campaigns in place to educate that market so that we could stimulate uh, the, the area that was having trouble converting. So even though we got less in-home, 100%, we raised substantially what we were able to do. So in total, we had $333,402 all in all in May. 
So even though our CPA was higher, well, of course it was higher. We were going after a more expensive service. The cost per clicks were going to be higher. Our click-through rate actually improved because we were able to get people stimulated in, 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 in the market. And yes, our quality score went down a little bit, but ultimately we achieved that positive ROI. We did better by 130%. So here are some action items that if I've inspired you to take a look at paid search, great. If I've inspired you just to have, know enough that you can have your conversation with your paid search person, that's great too. But here are some action items to take home. Number one, quality score is a health indicator. It's not a KPI. We must learn to treat it as such. Uh, number two, do not ask your campaigns to handle more than they can. It is vital that we are actually honoring the strategic intent of each campaign um, and we are not tasking it with too many things. We want to make sure that branded is separated, that it doesn't have the ability to spike the performance, to steal budget away that otherwise could be going to new discovery. We don't want to force poor Geralt to be a, a tax guy or like live in a, in a world where he's not a, a monster slayer, just like we want to be the best in our industry. We want to honor the fact that our industry might have certain metrics and norms. We don't need to be the best in everything. Um, and finally, we want to make sure that we are judging ourselves not by vanity metrics like an increase in quality score or even really by click-through rate, but that the return on ad spend, the ROI, is truly positive. And with that, thank you so much for letting me share some tidbits with you on PPC.